I know we disagree on this subject. I'm not saying my view is correct and Tony's isn't. I'm just giving my conservative view. Tony's liberal, I'm conservative. I think this is why the discussion is quite good. But Growth hormone, is it good or bad for our joint health? I mean, growth hormone repairs the body, so you'd think if you have some kind of damage in the tissue, it could repair it. It also hydrates the body or causes mineral retention and hydration, which that can be good for joints. And yet, if we take a large dosage of growth hormone, you feel the pain, the achy inside the joints, you get the swelling and inflammation in the joints. So is it the type of thing where any dosage of growth hormone is healthy for the joints or any dosage is unhealthy, is a small dosage good for longevity of the joints and a high dosage uh, painful and harmful for the joints. Uh, we have joint problems, should we be using growth hormone to help recover our joints? We should make a note first of all, when your joints hurt from growth hormone, that is due to water retention only. I've, just, I've confirmed this through an academic paper. So all that stuff about your uh, wrist hurting, the carpal tunnel crap, everyone thought that was the growth hormone, no, it's just the water. So Confirm. if you can control the water retention on growth hormone, you can avoid a lot of the growth hormone side effects. The, the pain. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, honestly, because growth hormone is a g genomic transcriptor. It changes the activity of your entire body. The cells that are what are called not senescent. Senescent cells are cells that can no longer divide and grow. For example, your bones, once you reach adulthood, are mostly senescent. The middle is senescent. The end becomes senescent when you reach adulthood. I have, by the way, a video on height if you guys want to see it also. Once this uh, ossifies, becomes bone, instead of being like a, car, like a connective tissue, and then becomes senescent, supposedly your bones can't grow anymore. This is not likely to be completely true. If you look at people that take growth hormone, including myself, when I took growth hormone before, my head is bigger than it used to be. You can see clearly my head is bigger than Tony's. And this came from growth hormone. I used to have a small head. My hands didn't change, but my feet, my toes got longer. And mm -hmm. I've, you know, I know a TRT clinic guy in California. He told me, you'd be surprised, people on two, two units a day, their feet grow too within two to three years. Mm -hmm. Which, why is that happening? Your toes and your feet and your head both have cells that are not senescent. So when you hit that growth hormone, even at a low dose, even at one unit, two units, so over time it's going to grow. So if your toes are growing and your head is growing, do you think it's completely unlikely that a small part of your bone here or somewhere else is growing also? Did you guys notice that people have pointy elbows when they take a lot of growth hormone? Yeah. I don't know why. It could be because they're training harder. It could be because there's their, some change. And their fingers and their knuckles, like wherever they connect, seem to get bigger. It's, yes, very interesting. So what I'm thinking is happening is there's still some growth of the bone in the joints. And that growth of the bone should cause sheer stress to the connective tissue over time. And the reason why we're talking about this is actually, we won't go into detail, but there's a gentleman in the industry who has joints falling apart all the time. And he's notorious for having allegedly abused growth hormone for many years. And Tony was asking me, do you think it's related? Do you think that, that the growth hormone could cause a joint issue? I really do think so. You know, I don't know how, it, if it causes any kind of weakening of connective tissue specifically, because it's a very complex subject. Nobody can really answer that easily. But there's a very strong likelihood that the joint in, in character changes over the years of growth hormone use. Well, if we look at the most extreme people using the highest dosages of growth hormone and we look at their joints, so yes, they do, they, the joints do seem to get, get bigger, but they don't seem to have like tears or uh, like not everybody has joint problems, I think, because of the growth hormone, but because of the heavy lifting. And it kind of goes hand in hand. Right? So t tears are different than joint degradation. So tears are separate issues. I'm not talking about tears because they're not related to the bone growing. I'm talking about the joint is becoming less stable potentially over time and should in the end, I mean, I, can't, I don't want to mention names here, but there's other people that have the exact same problem that abuse growth hormone for years. They're also diabetics just like that guy. There's the same pattern everywhere. Now, what, he, what Tony's also commenting on is this. Years ago, on the forums especially, on anabolic mind and muscle and these old forums, they used to actually think that growth hormone was good for your connective tissue, that this is going to protect you. That's certainly not true. I've talked to tons of powerlifters. We used to take the HIV patients 30 units a day and over the years did not have better health of their joints. Now, if you go injure yourself, you have some kind of injury and you want to solve the injury, having more growth factors in your body means you have less inflammation. They work hand in hand and also means you'll have more blood supply to the area, more healing going on and so on. That's totally true. Doesn't mean that taking the growth hormone without an injury protects you from the injury. They're different things. So if, if I had to pick only one peptide to use, I pick growth hormone, but I prefer to have access to all these hundreds and thousands of different peptides because there's a peptide that does 
each individual thing in the body, like BPC-157 and TB-500, these are, these are healing peptides. Well, growth hormone is, is like the parent peptide, and the body does break down growth hormone into lots of other different peptides. That I don't even know if we know all of the different peptides that exist that come, that come broken down from growth hormone. So I think taking growth hormone does have the ability to heal all these little different parts of the body, but the problem is you take a very large dosage of growth hormone and you get this small amount of increase in all these other different healing peptides where it would be much, much safer to take a healing peptide that's more specifically tailored for that specific goal that doesn't have the potential side effects of increasing all these different peptides or growth hormone itself. So Let's I think that growth hormone can be used for healing, but it's more optimal to pick a more specific healing peptide. Yeah, let's, pick, let's take an example, not from healing. Well, even from healing. Say you had a brain injury, like I often get concussions because I get hit a lot in the head. But mm. <laughs> when you get a concussion, and you want to limit the amount of damage going on in your brain and to heal the damage that has gone on. You could take growth hormone, right? What you should do is take a beta blocker, obviously. But you could take, we'll just give an example. You could take growth hormone or you could take brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, the main growth factor that SSRIs increase and that cerebral lysine increases. This growth factor is also commanded by growth hormone. When you increase growth hormone, you also grow the brain and through BDNF. But you could actually take BDNF directly, like cerebral lysine contains BDNF but a pig's BDNF. So I don't call these things peptides necessarily. They're not all peptides, but a lot of them are. The most important thing is they're usually growth factors. That wasn't really what I was trying to get at, wh whether it's a healing or not healing thing, but the, f the, the comment about joint degradation, something that people don't take seriously enough. I really believe if you use growth hormone for 10 years, you're gonna have much worse joints. It happened to me, but by the way, the to reason- To prevent I, it, do we just take breaks from the growth hormone, use the no. growth hormone at times when we get the maximum benefit from it, but don't necessarily use it every day for our whole life? It's an interesting question. So I don't think anybody should use growth hormone in adulthood. I think it's a, it's a really stupid choice. Really stupid. Growth hormone, you're selling today for tomorrow. You're going to die sooner, for sure. Your heart will degrade faster, unless you're using a very low amount. If you're using a very low amount, you'll maintain, for example, your, your brain size, your heart size, and that can be useful if you're eating very little and you're mainly scared of heart disease or, or, or um, brain disease, neurodegenerative disease. But if you're talking about cancers, there's no, you're just screwing yourself. Even one unit, and keep in mind guys, when you use growth hormone, you think, oh, I didn't get cancer this time, so I'm cool. No, you're not cool. You just caused all the cells to divide. Now they're gonna divide later, and they're ahead in the rate of division. So they're closer to mutation. Nothing used with growth hormone will ever get off your body. You've just pushed yourself closer to death. Yeah, so we're speaking so general, right, across just, we're talking about like everybody in general, but if you're you talking took about it case by case. Right? Well, if you took a case by case basis, like, some people, let's say they're obese, but growth hormone would really help them lose a lot of weight. Like the health benefits and longevity that come from losing the weight by using the growth hormone is much more significant. I don't think so. I, I honestly don't think so. I think that if an obese person was obese, taking growth hormone would be a bad choice. They, get, they screw themselves even more. Obesity is very associated with cancer. But hopefully, they were so obese and eating so badly, they didn't have much growth factors going on. Mm. Then you add growth hormone. So if we take someone who's not at risk of cancer, they have a good cancer mitigation strategy, they're not worried about the cancer increase from growth hormone, then... But why would I say that the obese person, that growth hormone may not be a good idea for them? Well, they can take another kind of drug. They can take like a GLP-1 agonist and not get hungry. So growth hormone doesn't burn fat like that, for God's sake. It's not that fast. And it's not that powerful for burning fat either. I mean, nothing, I mean, nothing really is unless it's a stimulatory drug like clenbuterol or adrenaline or something like yeah. that. But you were saying about someone that's not fat. I know we disagree on this subject. I'm not saying my view is correct and Tony's isn't. I'm just giving my conservative view. Tony's liberal, I'm conservative. I think this is why the discussion is quite good. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have growth. I, I, if I had a child, I would advise them never to touch growth hormone in their life. Okay, let's, unless, let's unless really they were before the age of 18. How about you? Would you use growth hormone now? No. Oh. Oh, oh well, no, no. Maybe, maybe if I do, I, this is true, I did recently use growth hormone. But I would use it because I don't care that much about my health or something like that. If I was caring about my life a lot, I would not touch it. So, well, for okay, so you, if, if we care more about the quality of our life right yeah, now, yeah, okay. and a little bit less about the longevity, like you got to pick your poison. So, right? okay, so that's a different right. thing. So, when you trade off longevity with health span, health span being like your healthy lifespan, how long your lifespan is, but how healthy it is also. So, considering that, I don't know that. Some people do get a, I think it depends on the person. Like some people, for example, for me, 
I'm, I'm naturally very stimulated. I don't sleep that well later in life. Uh, you with the ApoE4 variant, you don't sleep very well. For us, growth hormone may do something. It, you know, for those that don't know, growth hormone is anxiolytic. It clearly reduces anxiety in studies. So it reduces anxiety, it makes you sleep deeper, it makes you feel, I feel a bit calmer all the time on growth hormone. Mm -hmm. This is a reason I would consider taking it, but if I, you know, I wouldn't do it for a long time. If I took it, even if I was took, talking about health span, within five to six years, I think the, the next, or not five to six, I don't know exactly, but before 10 years, I think growth hormone would start to give me a net negative. Like, let me give you guys an example. This video is getting too long, but one final example. And maybe we should post a picture of this. Dallas McCarver's face changing. Now, if, if we don't post a picture, you can go to my Instagram, go to the safe stories. On the safe stories, I have one called mTOR nose or something like that. You can see Dallas's nose expand within a two year period. It almost doubles and his face widens and his face from here widens. The problem is this, bro. Nobody's face changes on growth hormone and gets better looking. Nobody's, trust me. I am uglier than when before I used growth hormone, which is saying something because I wasn't starting with much in the first place. I took myself down. This is a serious concern. If you use growth hormone for five to 10 years, you will be uglier also, which is another thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Here's an example of someone that I care and love about that I would put on growth hormone if I am concerned about their health and longevity. My parents, my, my stepdad's 80, 85 years old. He's in perfect health, but you know, the, the muscles really start atrophying, mm. you know, and things just don't work as well. And growth hormone is something that can like revitalize the body. Like it, it can make you stronger. It can make you rebuild more. It can heal injuries that maybe didn't finish healing before. And he's not at risk of cancer and he's just got no other <coughs> diseases. Like what's going to kill him is just old age, frailty and weakness. And in that case, just the same reason why cancer patients use steroids and growth hormone. I think that growth hormone would actually extend his length of life and quality of life. So, so, so this is why I think it's so individually specific. It's hard to generally, we're generally, yeah, most people <coughs> shouldn't just be taking growth hormone just to take growth hormone. But there's a lot of specific situations where the benefits, I believe, far outweigh the risks. So this, this reverts to this observation that Walter Longo made uh, from a paper in the last few years, which is that it appears that above the age of 60 or so, higher protein consumption is healthier. Mm. The low, before the age of 60, you shouldn't eat more than 90 grams of protein a day. You probably live a shorter life and probably a worse well, life. Well, during puberty, puberty, during puberty, more protein are, and growth top periods, more protein. In fact, right? in and fact, then once you reach your full growth. No, no, interesting. I would do that. But in fact, it appears even higher protein during puberty or during childhood will cause you to age faster later in life. Mm. But it also it makes causes much you to have much more muscle. And yeah, no, not just muscle. No, no. Most important thing is height. Mm. Height is really correlated with protein consumption. In fact, you know, that's how Europe became taller. Europe used to be 5'8". Mm. It's because in, in 300 years ago, they were consuming far less meat. Mm. But what I was trying to say here is this. After the age of 50 to 60 or so, usually after the age of 60, having over like 60 grams of protein is better for you than having less. And this might indicate that having a low dose of growth hormone may also be useful because these things work through the same pathways. Protein turns on the mechanistic target of rapamycin, which is the major pathway, by the way. It's not growth hormone. It's mTOR that, com that controls growth hormone, which somewhat controls everything else. They all sort of move, by the way. They're like sticky, the growth factors. They don't necessarily all control themselves downwards, but they also control themselves upwards. They, they associate with each other. So when you broken growth hormone out, brain-derived neurotrophic factor usually comes out also. Anyway, this was a good discussion, I think. Thank you, guys. Subscribe, oh, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, to the channel. Let us know in the comments what else you want us to talk about. And be small and small friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.